Good evening, free enterprise fans and RPG Limit Break fans, and welcome to this exciting game two between Dusty Griff and Invenerable. I was going to introduce my co-coms, but now I'm just captivated by Invenerable's naming scheme. I mean, go. Go? Go, go, go. 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 Poi. Go. <laughs> Anyway, I am joined by Oscar424. Uh, somebody decided that we weren't allowed to roll seeds today, and they stuck us in the commentary booth together. So we're here to just talk. Yeah, I think whoever did that had pretty good taste. Just this whole restream team is fantastic with Alisal and Imperial Dragon behind the scenes doing all the heavy lifting for us. So I'm, I'm quite happy with them. Yeah, it's almost like someone specifically designed this to be like we were going out for brunch. So what lies, lies and slander and total spoilers. Truth. I'm the one that designed this team. It's fine. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's look at these objectives here. Um, these ones on screen, they, those look like lyrics to uh, Captain Jack Sparrow from uh, the Lonely Island, I believe. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just picturing Michael Bolton singing this right <laughs> now. I'm here for Kid, it. Just him dressed up in like the Dark Knight uh, Cecil. <laughs> outfit <laughs> oh he goes from regular clothes to suddenly dark knight cecil <laughs> i'm okay with it uh but the actual objectives here we have launch the falcon liberate baron castle conquer the vanilla white spear altar and then everyone's favorite mainstay forging the legend sword with the adamant um uh, so yeah we have a hook route objective we have a moon objective and an overworld uh key item the baron key this is uh this I don't think this is going to be particularly fast. Oh, no. I mean, anytime you have launch, launch the Falcon as a quest, it, going down the hook route can make or break a seed. It, and it really depends on what two bosses are on that hook route. It could be as free as can be, and it could be, it could keep you there for hours. Literally, we've, we've seen it happen in this tournament multiple times. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And with this SID start, uh, getting through those early key item checks is going to be pretty easy, especially if we find someone to accompany him uh, or even just a nice earth hammer in a treasure chest uh, could go a, a long way to getting us off the overworld quickly. Uh, for those of you that missed out on the match yesterday, I'm not going to spoil the details, but obviously Invenerable did win. I highly suggest you go back and watch that match uh, just to get the details of it. I don't think we're going to see a repeat of how that one played out. Uh, both these runners are going to be uh, they're going to be playing their hardest. Uh, Dusty Griff trying to fight for that game three and Invenerable uh, hoping to advance to the round of eight. I just looking at these two people matched up in the first part of the round of or just the round of 16. I mean, this is this kind of matchup you would see in like a finals without question. So this is. This is an absolutely crazy match, and both of them are such amazing technical runners. It's This is going to be a clinic. Yep, and looks like we are underway. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. The match yesterday was a lot of fun to watch. And uh, hey, you want someone to pair with this Rosa, or the Sid. A Rosa's a good one, especially because you can just grab her bow and arrow and back row the Sid right from the start. Agreed. And, you know, I love seeing the spoon. I'm a fan of Edward. Unfortunately, with the t these table flags, the best we can do is hope we have an edge so we can dart that for nine hundred nine four nines. Numbers are hard. Uh, alternatively, we are 10% to 10 key items. There is that uh, So, yeah, Odin moved out of the basement and is taken by Gen Spot. And our runners are launching the Enterprise. Uh, I'm really curious to see where they go. Uh, both of these runners like yesterday we saw a ton of just high execution and uh, very interesting routing choices and uh, yeah we're in yeah. for a treat buckle in yeah it looks like Invenerable is just going with the standard watery pass check getting a potential new character um, getting some of those tre treasure chests there have been a decent amount of value found in the watery pass especially since it is considered out of the way it looks like we have a potential punch mage to join us with Yang. We'll see if he takes that or not. Yep, and there was a, uh, a Dark Knight Cecil in the waterfall uh, training up uh, potentially to get more strength to go up ordeals and become a paladin. Uh, but Dusky Griff's not even going to bother. Just reset right out of it. Goes into dancing to do some looting. As Venerable's done after just that brief looting spree. 
yeah, it's hit or miss when you see some runners go deeper into the watery pass or not. I mean, it's it's paid off for some runners oh. and it's paid off for others. That was an earth hammer in the Damsian basement, and Venerable's heading right there. We'll be getting this. That is going to, uh, between the bow and arrow you can grab from Rosa to enable the back row bit and the earth hammer there, uh, Sid's not going to be afraid of much of anything here on the overworld. No, and plus those were charm arrows also found in, in Damsian, so Rosa's got some nice, nice arrows to use. And of course, we can't have a seed without a little bit of vanilla. We have an eddy, but unfortunately we can't have a spoony bard. Yep, no spoony bard. If this were group stages, you would see that Edward after getting that starting spoon and go, ooh, that's an exciting prospect, but not today. So you suddenly see people doing what they never thought possible, taking the Edward immediately and not worrying about any strats right away. Yep. Uh, Dusty Griff now going to go loot here. Get this, uh, I believe it was a bandana. Uh, also, see that there's a yang here. I fully expect him to also leave him behind. Uh, Yang is very good in the late game. Uh, he is what we affectionately call a punch mage uh, because of the claws that he gets that exploit weaknesses and the fact that he just gains a lot of power based off his level. But Dusty doesn't even want to send him to Mysidia, not even bothering. And as Dusty does a little bit of shopping, we see Inven taking on the Antline Cave and potential boss check and key item check. And it looks like we have a sleeping Rosa in a the, little uh, the bit more region. vanilla, a little yeah. more vanilla. We, we think staff has stopped by and helped with the rolling of this seed. Hey, it's not my, it's not me this time. I promise. I, mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't touch it. Uh, there we go. Even roll enabling the back row glitch for those watching. If you are uninitiated to what we referred to as a back row glitch, in Final Fantasy IV, if you enable someone to have the back row bit, basically they are equipping a weapon that does full damage regardless of their row status or the enemy's row status. Uh, the game never checks to actually remove that. Uh, so if you equip a bow and arrow and then equip a melee weapon, it's still going to think you have that ranged weapon equipped. So you can put your character in the back row, which will allow them to take less melee damage. Uh, and it will also allow them to hit characters regardless of the enemy row, which is very handy, handy on like CPU uh, to do full damage. And we apparently can't get enough of vanilla. In Mysidia, we have both twins. We have Palum and Porum. Ali, you, you turned on character animation, right? <laughs> oh, there's a hook. Even. Oh, wow. The Antlion Cave has value. The uh, Inman was seen playing with his dolls again and came up with a hook on that one. Uh, so for anybody that was actually paying attention to Dusty's screen, I have to ask, was Porum on the right and Palum on the left? Because if so, uh, that was true yes. vanilla. Yes, so, yes, they were. That is true vanilla. I love to see it. Uh, and Venerable with that hook in hand now has the ability not only to get underground, but also to get that objective to uh, the bosses there. There are two could still be very, very obnoxious. So we probably won't see that until he does a few more overworld checks. Maybe looking for that magma key or at least a bit more safety in, uh, in dealing with some of those bosses. Yeah, speaking of the magma key, that does bring up a very good point because yes, the hook route is one of our objectives and we do have to complete three of the four objectives to get the crystal in this race. But would you be, if you got the magma key, would you want to go underground first using the magma key, level up a little bit and then tackle the hook route? Or would you just want to maybe complete the overworld, get some levels, and see what the hook route holds? I personally would like to go underground uh, because I can check my freebies. I can get uh, the Fate March chest and Sheila 1, uh, possibly uh, get some good equipment to help me level. Uh, there's a little bit of time waste there if you do have to do the hook route eventually anyway, but there's also, because we only have to do three of four, maybe we can avoid the hook route entirely if the key items are very generous. And as Invenable and the chat has pointed out, uh, Invenable did check out that blue robe on Mount Hobbs, and it turned out it was a free fight in the form of Water Hag, which is great information for Inven to know. However, that does mean that the next time we see a blue robe boss anywhere in this seed, it's going to be everybody's favorite alt gauntlet. Oh, I'm excited. That alt gauntlet, uh, five oh. fights, 
or yeah, five fights of very, very fun encounters depending where it's at. Yeah, and I've, I've noticed that one of the surprisingly rude spots to see in all gauntlets is actually the king queen spot in the hook route. I know I've, I've had problems personally with that particular spot. Yeah, it can be a bit of a bit of a marathon to get through, and if you're going in there on like an early dive to the hook route, hoping to just exploit a boss weakness, get through it. Uh, it can be a pretty rude awakening because you have to basically fight a battle of attrition and you may not have the MP for it or even uh, the GA items that you want to get through that many fights. And an even better option would obviously be the White Sphere Altar because we're we're nice people and we, we like to see fun things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Inven is headed towards Mount Ordeals. No Tella in hand, uh, no... Cecil in hand. Uh, here's a Rosa. Hey, we finally got a non-vanilla character check. Um, so apparently the uh, the randomization of the characters wasn't on, but it was also an Oops All Rosa seed. Yeah, basically. Uh, so this is a significant time sink uh, to do ordeals. It is three bosses. Uh, but if you're really wanting to find that magma key or even just maybe presume that your opponent might fade this, uh, this is good to play. Also, if you find a Tello later, you don't have to come back. We have one variant of Noodle on Mount Ordeals in the form of Leviathan. How is Leviathan in this particular spot? I know it's a relatively early game spot. However, it is the King of Monsters. This spot has probably one of the lowest physical and magic attacks uh, imaginable. So it really is not much of a threat. Honestly, the fact that it has a HP-based attack is kind of the worst spot. Uh, Ice 2 itself, always going to hit fairly hard because it is a second level spell, but that 328 could be more than double that. Just one more boss spot across this bridge. That makes sense. And ooh, if you're going to try to take over for Bull Castle, you better send a Wyvern. And unfortunately, that is who Dusty found. Ooh, I really hope he didn't do shopping before checking that. Ooh, he had saved outside of Hobbs, so I'm not sure if he did or not. Wyvern at Fabul is the primary reason that I save outside Fabul, check the boss before I do shopping. <laughs> it is definitely, uh, I'm going to use a, a Baka style pun here. It's definitely uh, burned me once that. I missed on Venerable side. Is this a... Uh, I think this is... This has to be a regular encounter because this isn't a back attack, so this isn't alt gauntlet. That's a very interesting play. Inven, what are you doing? Inven's the nice way of what in the blood way of what. Oh, I think I might know what he's doing. He's probably trying to get Ice 2 on Palom because his Palom died in that first boss. Oh, oh... That is a good point there. And sure enough, that's exactly what he got. See, yeah. that's, why they, that's why a certain nice person paired me up with a smart person like you. I don't know how nice or smart that person is, but uh, Dusty <laughs> Griff has joined in Ven here uh, on Ordeals, taking out Leviathan. Uh, so both runners opting to come to Baron Inn before even checking who's at the Baron Inn spot, both character and uh, boss-wise. Uh, Inven tossing that sorcerer rope on Palum to get those ice twos hitting harder for this back. Well, okay, I mean, it's fresh. you're fine. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I saw the purple robe and was about to like have Ali, like have words for Ali for being better at rolling vanilla than I am. But at least this is French vanilla. I mean, would that make maybe maybe my long Z will be in? the top of ordeals and just everything got shifted a little bit my favorite ordeals i've ever encountered was a dkc at mylon a mylon at mylon c and a mylon c at dkc it was fantastic it is beautiful it was just musical chairs on mount ordeals man. i'm just picturing just the group of them going around the three chairs i mean would it, would it be the basic battle music that they did that too I think we can just use the Rape That Treasury music. Ooh, good call.
All right, Dusty is through the noodle. Uh, didn't have his palm go down, so he got his uh, level two spells. And then has taken out all the ghouls, courtesy of that lovely earth hammer that we found earlier. Because when used in battle, it casts a uh, a very weak quake spell, uh, but it's very useful for taking out large groups of low level enemies. And now we're seeing some bu uh, bluffs to get Hallam's uh, wisdom up to be able to hit very hard with this fire too. Now what's the max number of bluff stacks that Palom can have before it's pointless at that point? To my knowledge, and I always get corrected when I say wrong information, so I'm trusting you, chat. I think you can go all the way up to 99 wisdom, and I think each stack gives 60. But I think it does fall off after a certain amount of time. I'm not sure on that. And chat does have your back on this one, Dr. Kossick. Chat said, yes, it did cap at 99. Plus 15 each time or plus 16. And I be on this one. I am learning. I am starting to give proper information on the commentary instead of bad information. I've come a long way. And we actually see Dusty take a slightly different strategy for this fight. Uh, used a big bomb to get rid of those, uh, those friendos and mylons. And Inven got through and is going to be showing us the key item here in Ordeals, powering up any Tellas and Cecil's in the Seed, and uh, showing us what boss is here. We know it's not Wyvern, so it's not going to be, like, super rude, because I don't think he saved after that back attack. And a fantastic... Ooh! Not only is it a fantastic key item check with the... Pit, oh! But we bonus round with Demist! Fantastic! That is probably the densest, like amount of key items you could get in a single location because the pan will unlock two by itself and then demist is a third that is incredible value for what i would consider a bit of a gamble in this early game yeah i uh hey ali do you want to roll one of my seeds in the future if you're going to give this kind of amount of ordeals i i accept the vanilla Now, this will be the only time I mention it, uh, and I'm going to mention it vaguely, but I can imagine that uh, Dusty has written furiously somewhere nearby and stuck it to his monitor. Uh, check Demist. <laughs> I would agree with you on that one. But I wouldn't be too surprised if that is where Inven immediately goes to. I imagine Invent's going to go immediately check this uh, Demist and then likely go and see if he can find a Magna Key or any other sort of value out of the Baron Inn. Maybe a Tella. Uh, a Tella would be great, not only because it sets up a future D-Machine grind once you get your Darkness Crystal. Tella's also very, very useful on that hook route. The utility spells that he offers in the form of like Blink and Berserk uh, on top of his Tier 3 Elemental spells, which can hit boss weakness is very hard uh it's very invaluable oh he hasn't done football yet that's correct yeah he's gonna need a look surprise. out for that wyvern yep. look out let's see if inven can survive non-wyvern standard time on this one so we all just wait sweet and glorious and tissa Patient. We got the star rail off. Well done on Inven's side. Unfortunately, the magic spot is not that great, so he does have to uh, finish that fight. But really nice job with the run buffer. Meanwhile, we have Dusty absolutely heading to check on Rudy's mom and seeing what fun key item awaits him. Hopefully, it is the... Ah, it's a pass. It's a pass. That is value. Um, we do have a moon objective, but it is possible on this seed that the legend and adamant fall into our runner's laps, and we don't have to go do that vanilla white spur altar. Um, now, something to point out on Inven side before this key item is revealed. This could be a magma key, even though it's behind Wyvern, because we already have gotten the hook. It's a vampire. Never mind. 
for those that aren't quite initiated, there are three bosses that cannot gate the runner's ways underground. Those would be Golbez, Valvalis, and our favorite Wyvern. And that's just because, honestly, those are really rude fights, and they require a certain way to defeat them. Uh, but since the er, since the hook has already been found under a non-gated boss, yeah, like Zoe said, that magma key could easily be there. Now, say Valvalis was at Antlion Cave, and Valvalis gave the hook. That would tell the runners immediately that there is a much easier way underground. They just have to find it still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, while Oscar was giving that great explanation of that particular uh, quirk of our flags, uh, Dusty has made it over to Baron Inn. There's a Cecil waiting here, uh, having a nice brunch with the Maga Sisters. Uh, petition to name this restream team, like the four of us, just the Maga Sisters plus one. I'm here for it. And what's actually nice about seeing that Cecil there, that's actually our second Cecil. So, for those that might be a little squirrely about bringing a single Cecil since Vanilla Agility is on, seeing that second one does open some options if they want to go massive bomb strats. Yeah, if we find something like a Crystal Sword or even a, an Excal here in the early game before they decide to round out their party, uh, then... In the back of your head, you got to be wondering, should I take those two Cecils? One of them is just going to be dead weight. It's going to be your anchor. But in most seeds, you will have a dead weight anchor on Zeromas anyway. And that, that huge power that you get from a well-equipped Cecil is not to be uh, not to be understated. Completely agree. As Inven is getting his pass, um, Dusty is now taking on everyone. Well, what I like to think of as the weirdest looking boss in this game, Antlion. He's just so happy to see you. It's the eyes that get me every time. At least I think they're eyes, I don't know. So here's a question for you. If those are Antlion's eyes, are those what his pupils look like or does he blink sideways? I just assume Antlion just stares and doesn't blink. And that's why he just has that glossed over look on his face. <laughs> as Boss Morpheus is saying in chat, Antline is the cutest boss in FE. I had to behold her, my friend. <laughs> yep, yeah, I had to the beholder. 100%. Uh, and now, now you're making me think who is the cutest <laughs> boss in Final Fantasy IV? That's a tough one. Well, whoever it is, if you put a ribbon on them, they'll be even cuter, because that's what Dusty just got from Baron Inn. That was a very nice helmet to find, for sure. <laughs> As Scala has pointed out, Leg is pretty cute. I mean, Scala, I would have to agree that Leg is pretty cute, but I am, bi uh, but I am biased. So we have uh, both our runners high-fiving each other in Baron. We have Dusty doing a little bit of shopping, selling, and then uh, Incredible is joining the Mega Sisters Party of Four. He'll be awarded his ribbon once that fight and the Antlion is done. And Dusty finds Silkwebs over here in the Baron item shop. It's the one and only item available there, but picked up five of them. Uh, you want one for Zeromas if you can, if you can swing it, and then those other, uh, other four can help find some very particular bosses uh, that may be in nasty spots that you want to slow down. Very good for stuff like Odin, uh, Evil Wall, stuff like that. Anything that's very punchy in a very fast spot, Silkweb will slow them. Now let's see if Dusty is able to defeat Wyvern in round two. Ding, ding. Um, but on that note, uh, with Dusty having shown us what is at the Baron Inn, uh, we are out of the item locations on the overworld because D-Mist has been located. So this hook is our route underground. You love to see it. You really do. But I'm a horrible, horrible person that loves rolling garbage seeds, so I'm here for it. Uh, Ali, please tell me that you rolled Evil Wall into Kanatsu. Please. I'm always a fan of the fight, Ogo. 
Ogo is good. Kainata Ruby is just so incredibly rude. Like if we see an evil wall at uh, at King Queen, I would not be surprised if either of these runners maybe goes and grabs that Eddie and just sacrifices that party slot to be able to get through it. I mean, I know Eddie gets a decent amount of agility as he levels up, but would it just be worthwhile to make him the deadweight anchor and keep him dead pretty much the entire seat at that point? I, I think so. Uh, the King Queen spot does not give experience, so leaving Eddie alive to do a the hide strats and have the wall kill itself, uh, then you can just kill him off before the ruby fight and just have a uh, uh, an anchor in the shape of a bard. Hey, anytime the bard gets more airtime, makes me a happy, happy viewer of Free Enterprise. But I also have a very biased opinion on that one. I've seen your emotes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, both our runners have now made uh, made complete work of these overworld checks. Uh, they both know Hook is the route that they need to go, so they will get underground by virtue of their second objective. Inven coming here to pick up an additional character for his party, whereas Dusty is grabbing the hovercraft and going somewhere else. And Inven has picked up a second Rosa. That's actually pretty interesting. I mean, Rosa can work very well as an absolute masterful white mage, but give her, with the, give her the right bow and arrow set, she can be a pretty good DPS dealer herself. So I'm curious as to what he's going to be doing with, uh, with second bay. Uh, I, I like this. I think what he might be trying to do is uh, we might see him to take on a trap chest in uh, Castle Eblin, potentially, uh, to get some more experience, and then the Mad Ogre chest in Cave Eblin to get uh, get Blink on both Roses, uh, or prove me wrong. But having Blink on both Roses can really help to mitigate any sort of physical boss that you might encounter at this King Queen spot. And the physical damage there is the is what you're scared of. Their magic power is very weak uh, because the scripted encounter there is the King and Queen and they only use Fire 1 and Fire 2 and it's meant to be something you can't lose. So okay. it's over very quick. That makes sense. Of course, as Chaz pointing out, uh, they're curious to see if Inven has uh, pulled some Medusa arrows because he is a fan of the Medusa arrow strat as of late. But we get to see that character, and oh boy, we've oh got boy. a Pella. I do not see a universe in which Inven does not take this Tella right here, right now, finishing out his party, uh, giving him the extra utility and power to almost definitely get through this hook route and set him up for a demishing grind uh, if and when they find the Darkness Crystal. Now, I'll admit, I was extremely distracted by the Tella and I missed the boss. Uh, it was a it was a blue guard, so it is either the officer ah. soldier fight or the Baron in guards. Yeah, gotcha. So in the grand scheme of things, not the rudest, especially with the white mage that could uh, just tell the guards to stop what they're doing. Oh. We'll, hope, we'll still hope for something rude like Needle Wall at, uh, at the King Queen spot. Yeah, we have, uh, I believe we found a Mute Bell earlier, which would stop the counterattacks from the Bear and Guards. You can very easily hit them with Size after they are no longer going to cast uh, their counter spells. You can very easily uh, Toad or Size the Officer. Uh, toad Strats are my favorite because uh, the soldiers will not listen to a frog. And uh, as Dusty is getting the good news with Tell on his side and looks like absolutely taking him, Inven actually did some looting and found a Soma drop, which is a fantastic item to uh, give Tella a or excuse me, give Tella MP. 10 MP specifically. 10 MP takes Tella from 90 MP to 100. Actually, he has two, so he found an extra one somewhere. Um, probably will just sell the second one, though. The extra 10 MP there may seem negligible, but if you are doing a demachine grind, weak costs 25 MP, and 25 fits nicely into 104 times. It does not fit nicely into 90, and it just makes your grind uh, easier to keep track of. Uh, 
you can more easily uh, make efficient use of your ethers and you just don't have to to worry about that spare like 15 mp that just goes down by a handful every time yeah there was also some re other really nice items uh the power staff so if you wanted a pretty cheeky way to get berserk um i saw a crystal helm so extra printed money i think there's a wind spear there are some great items for uh, runners to sell and sure enough they pretty much both are just following each other's paths right now and showing just yeah they, they both got the same idea and chat also pointing out that that extra 10 mp allows uh tella to summon a bunch of trains from the sky because he can now <laughs> uh cast metro uh oh sorry that's a smudge uh medio it's rocks not trains the ever fun swag rocks from old man tella Yep, if you give him a Soma Drop, he can cast it without dying. Very, very handy. Yeah, you would think that would be nice to have at, oh, I don't know, the end of uh, the game. Just thought. Eh, maybe. It's like in 7. Why don't you just use a soft on, on Red 13's dad? This is not that complicated of science. Why don't you just use a Phoenix Down on Aerith? Right, right. Like, like, I know she was your white mage, and so she was the one casting life, but, like, you have Phoenix Downs. Just, just... You clearly have the technology. I mean, maybe she had passed from mostly dead to dead dead? But still, it's worth a shot. They're, they're not that expensive. To blave. <laughs> I, I appreciate you got that. For those in chat don't know, that means to bluff because she was playing <laughs> cards, and she cheated. <laughs> Ooh, <whoa. laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Invenerable is now going to show us who is at this King Queen spot. Uh, uh, Lugay. Okay, this is fairly simple. So this is the speed run of the hook route. It's a, a very, very nice hook route between these two bosses. Yeah, Dr. Dialogue does have a second form, but I believe the overall HP total is broken up between the different forms, or is it reset after the first one? Sorry, I'm still laughing at the the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the bluff. What did I miss? <laughs> so, that's alright. So, um, with Dr. Luga here, does the does the HP total from King Queen Evelyn get divvied up between Dr. Lugay, Ball Knob, and then Lugay 2.0? Yes. Or yes. So nice. Lugay is uh, affectionately known as the cutscene boss, but he's also it is a two phase fight uh, that HP is split amongst all three units. The split, I'm not sure exactly how it gets split, but uh, that's the reason why bosses in the Lugay spot have nearly 19,000 hit points, is because it gains all the hit points from both phases of this fight. Oh, it is four units. Thank you, Dia, because we also have uh, Bon Abzi. Oh, that's right. I was thinking about that one. But yeah, as, as it's being noticed, the, the Earth Hammer from Sid is absolutely doing work right now. It was such a fantastic find early on. Yeah, hits the machines really hard. Uh, Bon Ab and the second form of Dr. Lugay are both uh, machines, so they take that bonus damage. It also just has a very good attack power for Sid and also gives a strength bonus, which... Uh, and push him across a multiplier threshold and allow him to do more damage. With that, uh, just under 31 minutes, and Ben will be the first one to, well, get ready to take on the Falcon objective. I totally forgot to count, and uh, yeah, forgot about the guards. I really want to see Toad Officer Soldier here. Come on. One of Invent's favorite things to do. Ah, it's guards. Save that for a spicier location. They're they're still very punchy, uh, but this mute bell will stop them from uh, counterattacking. Uh, it's almost like Inven. It's almost like I've watched Inven a lot to know what he would do here, and I imagine we'll get a size coming out from Tella. Or just stone. Stone works. And correct me if I'm wrong, but since Tella is in that middle spot, that stone will have a little bit more accuracy, which 
hopefully, as what we see here, was able to just take out those two right away. Yep. Middle spot, uh, middle slot on the team, 25% additional accuracy. Uh, so Tella being in the middle spot for a D-Machine grind uh, helps his weak not miss, also helps some of these status effects not miss because his magic stats, even for an old sage like him, aren't very good. Uh, unless you start giving him stuff like a Stardust Rod for his Black Magic spells or a Life Staff for his White Magic uh, status spells. You know what I was going to say before, because I totally forgot about that second boss with those guards. Uh, it looks like Inman will be the first one heading underground and the first one to complete object an objective about 33 minutes into this match. So now... Where do you go from here? I mean, I'm I'm hard pressed to not immediately go and set up Sheila and go to the Silk Cave, but that's just me personally. Yeah, you've got the pan. I say you go straight. I I, I potentially go do the Fey March freebie first, check those bosses, see how nasty it is, um, and then go do your Silk Cave Sheila one and Sheila two, uh, because if you hit on a Baron Key and a Darkness Crystal there. Well, you're in go mode, and you don't have to do any other fights aside from that vanilla white spear altar and the Baron. I can't point out, uh, Invertible did not check the lower Babel boss. You can actually see it if you move to a certain spot as you're heading towards the Falcon. But he did not take a look at that. I imagine he has very little interest in what that boss is. Uh, it's not an objective. He's hoping he never has to even find out who's up there. Uh, he is doing everything he can to save every single square and frame of movement it seems right now. I don't understand that. I mean, Dusty is known to be such a technical runner of free enterprise. I mean, you give him a uh, half a second and he will capitalize it. And oh, so it looks out. Uh, Fame March has delivered the goods with one half of the forge with the adamant rock. Yep, so. Uh, we are now just hunting basically two of three key items to get our go mode. Uh, the Legend Sword, the Baron Key, and the Darkness Crystal. I'm personally hoping they don't find the Darkness Crystal because that makes their grind way more interesting to watch. Same, 100%. Because Invan has a full party. He cannot take an Eddie to do Eddie strats. He has a Tella, but if he doesn't get a Darkness Crystal, it's all oh, that evil wall. Ooh, ooh, that's, that's where I'm hoping a key item is. Oh, that is... Ali, you've redeemed yourself. You didn't put it at King Queen, but you put it at Levy. And of course, since we've already seen Myla and Friends, we know that the Assure spot has Myla and Z, which is probably a little bit easier than Evil Wall. And by little, I mean a lot. I'm sorry, Oscar. I think you forgot who you're doing commentary with. It's, it's pronounced Myla and Zed. He's the Canadian Scarlet Yon. My, my apologies. So, Myla and Zed um, is going to be a little bit easier than that evil wall. <laughs> and by little, I mean a lot. Uh, while Inven is setting up this, uh, you're absolutely right. That evil wall, it's very scary. It's one of the, it's tied for the uh, hardest hitting spot in the game with Cave Bahamut and the CPU spot. Uh, evil wall is very, very punchy and you have a strict time limit on that before he starts crushing and killing everybody. Now you did find a ribbon, which will prevent instant death if you wanted to go that route, but it's not going to stop him from being punchy. Uh, one thing I did want to note is that Dusty, uh, after getting on the ground, is coming straight to set up this pan. Uh, did peek the boss, uh, chat saying it was a free boss, but also uh, didn't stone the Baron guards, chose to cast a weak and just uh, attack one to get a life glitch off. So got some extra experience from that fight. It looks like we have a Dragoon Helm from the Silk Cave, so a decent uh, helmet for people that can use it. That'll actually go pretty nicely on that Sid. If you need to do a D-Machine encounter, um, one of the biggest things you have to worry about is that fire. And Dragoon Armor does give you resistance to fire, so you'll take less damage on that Sid. And because he'll likely have the highest hit point pool, he can be the hardest one to heal. So it can actually make your fight in your grind fight a little bit faster just because of not having to worry as much about Sid. You are absolutely right. I, I always forget that Sid can equip Dragoon gear, just like Cecil and Kane. Just one of those things. And a crystal ring, so... And a full moon. Wow, that Pan and Sheila are not holding any goods. That was 
surprisingly rude. Well done, Allie. That was uh, that was the coveted triple womp. Uh, so now what do you do? Because, yeah, your freebies didn't pay off. <laughs> I, uh, I make my way over to the dwarf castle and uh, hope. Because I know, I don't know if I should say, I don't know about you, but I'm really hoping that Darkness Crystal is right behind the evil wall because oh, I'm a nice person. I am too. And because I'm just the nicest person, I'm really hoping that not only is that evil wall hiding the Darkness Crystal, but that the uh, White Spear Altar is hiding one of the Baron Key or the Legend Sword, but the other also yes. being on the moon. I would 100% be here for that. And apparently Dusty found a Siren in the Feymarch chest, so that was a fantastic find because, yeah, Sirens are not free to come by these days. Not at all. Uh, can be pretty useful if you need to get a quick, like, surge of experience. Uh, Puzz in S Pro, which is the flag set or the flag that is on for this flag set uh Coca-Cola shop is the only shop that can hold sirens so finding one in a chest uh you can go crack a quick yellow dragon egg get you know a nice cool 34,000 experience or save it and if you absolutely need to maybe do some gold dragons or warlocks on the moon if maybe your demon grind falls short And as it looks like Dusty is going to be heading over to get the unfortunate news of the Triple Womp with the pan, we see Invenable taking on the boss of Dwarf Castle, and the first one is the Dark Elf, which is a fun little yep. two boss. Yes, and the second phase is very interesting with this Tella in the party. Uh, does not have the boss bit, so it is vulnerable to all sorts of things. It's vulnerable to weak, vulnerable to the stop, uh, just any number of things you want to do to it and so it berserked his sid to force this phase change while staying on tella's turn to immediately get this week queued up and once it goes off sid will smack again and dark elf will be done That's actually a really brilliant thing to remember because this is a combination of two bosses you know the second the second boss it's vanilla golbez so it's not the strongest boss location, but if you're going into that fight with very low HP characters that are on the floor sleeping like crazy, that second boss could be extremely rude. And we have an Asura. Um, this is a pretty favorable location to see Asura. Uh, not going to do a ton to your party, and as long as you can maybe just bounce a, a wall off of her, or even just... This quake should probably do it. I think this plot has less than 3,000. That was a very, very low roll. Yeah, oops. Yeah, as long as the server doesn't heal up right here. Um, oh, well, it was Q3. It, it was, three. Three. It was fine. <laughs> If this was me playing the seed, that would have been a cure for instantly. Yeah. And this area is down. Uh, so now we see we saw a cane here, which we couldn't take, but we now know that there is a, a traitor in our midst. And who, or what is going to be around Luca's neck? It's going to be her precious pendant. And I'll actually be curious to see what Dusty does because he still has that fifth spot open, so. Would he want to take a cane? We do have the white spear. Would he want to potentially hold out for a different character? We'll see. And this is a, this is very interesting from both these runners. Uh, aside from some slight divergence with the football check and the order in which Dusty did Sylph Cave and Fey March, they've done all of the same checks pretty much in sequence. Uh, Inven has just the slightest advantage mainly from not taking that wipe at a uh, Vibernet for Bull. And it was it was another wump. It was a black robe. So, Keyless Tower, huh? Uh, yeah, so at this point we have uh, Keyless Tower and uh, Fey March. 
that's uh that's what's available to us and that evil wall is very scary that mylon zed is not the worst but it still punches really hard uh even if you do have uh fire three on tela and fire two on your uh palum so yeah keyless tower um I think I saw someone in chat say that it was a free boss up there. I'm not sure which boss was seen when Dusty did the check, but uh, hopefully that's what he said. We've got some nice armor in the, the shop, and we'll, we'll see if Invulnerable is going to be a run of people and do a job dwarf check. Uh, chat saying that... Uh, it was a blue guard, so then because we saw Baron guards at uh, the hook, that would mean that would be Officer Soldier. And that would be the one you wanted. And it looks like Inven's actually going to be heading to uh, Fay March again. Inven, it's going to take a lot of blinks to get through that evil wall. This could be absolutely huge if this pays off for sure, but that's... That, I think either fight's gonna be kinda long. Just to make sure, we, uh... We didn't find a moon veil anywhere, correct? I actually think at least one of them did. If Invin found a moon veil, he can throw that ribbon on, say, Sid, moon veil up Sid, and Sid will never die that far. Yeah, I should say it was it was a veil of some kind. I don't know if it was a moon or a star veil. I do not no. see a moon veil there. It was probably just a star veil then. Yeah, the wizard. Yeah, he's putting on wizard hats. He is going to be going for Mylon Zed here. Uh, Mylon Zed being undead, wizard hats providing that sort of uh, resistance has a fire weakness that you can exploit with both this Palum and this Tella, and if he has any fire arrows, even Rosa will do some uh, some good damage there. Oh, any any arrows will do a fine job, because he's a flying enemy. That will always fascinate me. <laughs> Just like Bahamut, not, dragon, not being a dragon. Makes total sense. Oh wait, the Earth Hammer is also fire. Thank you, chat, for pointing that out. So, uh, even Sid will be hitting for a big chunk of damage here. Still don't understand, like, I get from a flavor perspective why they gave Mylon Zed uh, flying, effectively, weakness to, to air as a flying enemy to avoid Quake, because you are going up that uh, mountain with Quake. But it would take so much grinding to actually get your Palum to Quake in the vanilla game that I don't know why they would have expected anybody to do it. I mean, I can't really talk about insane grinds as I think about some of the insane grinds I've done in other Final Fantasies. Like, yeah. not knowing how the limit break system worked and getting the average party level of my characters in 7 to upper 40s before the end of disc 1. Um... <laughs> So it's possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've definitely done some pretty outrageous grinds myself. Uh, one of the reasons why I love RPGs is if I get stuck at a wall, I'll just over grind and get through it. Uh, but we have finally some significant divergence here. Dusty is going to go do this keyless tower, knowing that it's going to be a free fight. Uh, Inven does not have that knowledge, opting not to have checked it on the way down to the hook route and is instead uh, beating up this, uh, this Mylon Zed here. So if either one of these turns into the Darkness Crystal, uh, this could get pretty interesting, especially if the other one turns into some sort of rabbit hole, like an Earth Crystal or uh, like a Rat Tail, where you have to go back up to check it. Also, uh, Blue Guard Sprite pointing at blueguardsprite.jpg. <laughs> oh, man. I just put... The spider, the, the two Spider-Man, just with their heads on them. This <laughs> game to change his ways. Oh, oh, bless our restreamer, Alice. <laughs> oh, we have fun here on 
in the free enterprise community. It is a fantastic community that if if you're not a part of, I, I highly recommend it. They are super welcoming to people of all levels. I mean, I'll be the first to admit, Zoe is like infinitely better at this than I am. I'm just kind of the, I'm not even in the also ran category. She actually competed and was rocking in this tournament. So yeah. Oh, uh, and speaking of duds. Yeah, like my tournament exit, uh, that's a dragon whip. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, uh, what did Dusty get? I missed it. Was that a darkness crystal on Dusty's side? Looks like it was. My screen skipped, so I missed it. Okay, well, Invent's headed right there, so this isn't too bad. Uh, but the time wasted on Mylon Z is is not good. Uh, this puts Dusty reasonably in the lead. I imagine, and I'm real bad at predicting the runner's movements thus far. Uh, that Dusty is going to be going up, going to be raising the big whale, going right back in Missidia, grabbing his fifth party member, then going to set up his grind and do the grind. And I imagine Inven does the same thing, just minus the grabbing the additional party member step. Yeah, looking out to be. Now, I mean, at this point, I don't know if Dusty would go back to fight Mylon Zed, but in terms of Inven, he's most likely, once he finishes his grind, gonna be just taking on moon bosses, because again, evil wall will be scary right there. Yeah, I think the one thing that Inven beating Mylon Zed uh, does in his favor is if there is, if that evil wall ends up being hard required, say it holds the Baron key that leads to the Legend Sword. Um, because Dusty is going to eventually have to go back down to Fey March in that circumstance and likely will take on that Mylon Z first. Now, he'll do it much faster than Inven did, but it will still be just a little bit of time where Inven could catch up. That is a very specific scenario. And a question from one of our fearless leaders, Rivers McCown. Uh, Inven doesn't have any party members who can slingshot, right? And I don't believe so, Rivers. Nope, I don't believe so. Um... I don't think that Dusty has any great options to slingshot, except for maybe the Yang, or if he wants to get a uh, really, really buff Rosa. Uh, so Inven will likely just be grinding to get uh, Quake on Palum, which should incidentally also get the white on the Rosas, uh, whereas Dusty is going to very likely have at least one character who is just very, very, very powerful by virtue of getting that Palum all the way to A question from chat. We haven't seen Iridia. We've seen about 18 roses, though. Uh, River's pointing out there is the cane, and with that white spear, slingshotting a cane is definitely a viable option here. Though I, I... Rivers would know better than I, but I would be curious if slingshotting the Yang, because uh, I think they did find a cat claw at some point, uh, would be better damage output in the long run than a white spear cane. Yeah, the only two claws I saw in, the, in Dusty's inventory were the Thunder Claw and the Poison Claw, I believe, but I didn't see the entire inventory. Yeah, and another thing to point out, uh, normally our runners love getting to 10 key items because that makes our grind so much faster. They get double XP, but right now we are... Well, I hate to do this. Playing the role of Bakovic. We're only halfway there, and their grind and those double key item XP is really looking on a pair at this point. I'm not even quite halfway there, so I'm going to ruin that pun a bit. We do only. Oh, no, we do, uh, because dark Darkness just lit up on Inven's side. So, yeah, halfway there, living on a prayer. Very nice. That is my one pun contribution for this entire tournament. That is your entire. Uh, that's your quota for the year. Met it. Don't have to do anything more. This isn't like pieces of flair. Like, there's no minimum fun count aside from one, and no one's <laughs> gonna judge you for not going above and beyond. It's like the Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. I'm just like, my work here is done, but you haven't done anything. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dusty checking the Moon character here. Uh, this could be interesting, or it could be a Womp. That's interesting. That's a Pelm. All right, uh, so yeah, 
uh, Dusty's going to take this. No question. I don't think I've ever seen someone hit yes faster. So it's essentially going to be the battle of the, the reflected nukes and the reflected whites. That's interesting. Also, it's a little bit terrifying. Is anything... Uh, I don't know if he raised the whale, but he's definitely checking out. Looks like Troy there right now. For a second, I thought he was just going to go for 1200 HP strats, and I was like, Inven, you're missing a couple of things. Like, still got to light up two more, two more objectives here. Don't get antsy. I don't know, I've, I've seen one of his practices where he decided to go to Z and forgot to uh, get forge his crystal, so eh, here we are. I've done that before, too. But admittedly, I learn a lot of what I do from Inven, so naturally I'll pick up from his mistakes as well. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Dusty is here to set up the um, nip, and Inven is raising the whale. Uh, will not have to bother checking the character. Uh, knows he can't take it. I'll lose that time on the cutscene later when he goes to do White's Altar, but... Yeah, this we'll be getting grinds started probably here within a minute or two of each other, depending on what encounter seed each of, each runner ends up on when they start this minute. Oh, Dia, is that how it works? I'm supposed to learn from them, not repeat them. I've been doing this wrong my entire life. But but, but I mean, it's it's flattery and yeah. stuff and things. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Or mockery if you're just uh, imitating all the mistakes. But they don't even know that. Because, yeah, I still want to do those mistakes 100%. So it does look like Dusty has finished setting up his manipulation for his grind, and we'll see if Inven does the same thing. Uh, chat's coming for your job, by the way. They say that uh, plateaus are the highest form of flattery. Fair. That's... Oh, that, that's, that's a clever one. Also, those who can do, those who can't teach, and those who can't teach commentate. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Chat. Don't tell her it said concentrate and not commentate. Look at the follow-up message. It says commentate. <laughs> okay, fine. It says commentate. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> back to the, the commentating. Uh, Dusty has finished the manip, is in the Giant of Babel, will be going to either the save room or the elements room. Uh, looks like the elements room is what his chart said. And Ben will be joining him shortly, so hope we have stuff to talk about, because it's going to be two D-Machine grinds going off at the same time. Yeah, it has been pretty interesting, because for some runners, you just see massive divergence. Um, I mean, whether it's a difference in skill or just difference in taste, but I mean, really, it, I'm almost not surprised that they've pretty much been like attached to each other's hip, aside from that one little bit of divergence. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really not surprised they're going into the grind zone for the same time. Yeah, not at all. Uh, the two main differences here: Dusty took the wipe to Wyvern in Fabul. Uh, and Ben gave back all that time and more by going to Mylon Z in Fey March instead of going straight to Keyless Tower. Uh, but beyond that, it's been pretty much identical this entire scene. So you're only at five key items, and you know you have for sure uh, some bosses left, particularly one on the uh, White Spear Altar. I mean, how high do you? How much grinding do you do here? Do you 
guarantee you get yourself a nuke or a white spell, or you maybe cut it off for the sake of time, maybe just a little bit short, and then bank on uh, bosses that you fight in the rest of the seed will bring you up to that level. So if I'm in Ben, I'm going all the way to nuke. There's no slingshot potential here, and you know you have to dive moon, is your only other option is that evil fall. For Dusty, I could see Dusty getting to uh, to white on Rosa, but should get the slingshotted column to nuke and being just shy of nuke on the other. Uh, and knowing that between a white spear altar, likely doing a ribbon room check and anything else that he may do, that should be enough to get him to to nuke on the second column. Uh, so I could see Dusty cutting this a bit short. I do not see Invan cutting this short whatsoever. Those, uh, about that, since <laughs> in honor of Rivers here, about that local sports bar ball team. Go sports ball! I actually like sports, so it's fun for me to make that joke. <laughs> me too, actually, but I I prefer hockey. I I'm a football fan, but my team's quarterback has had a season-ending injury, so I don't care about the NFL anymore this year. Understandable. And as our third commentator, <laughs> Rivers is pointing out, Dusty is getting some triples on these life glitches, so that is not only fantastic to see, but it's also going to speed up his grind significantly. Oh, oh, that's something for us to talk about. Asuka, explain the life glitch. Ah! Okay, so, uh, you might be wondering, why are our runners using life glitches on dead enemies? Well, interesting factoid, all of the enemies in this game have a vitality of zero. What does that mean? Well. If you decide to use a life life potion or life one, specifically life one, on the enemy, they get brought back to life. Well, the amount of HP they have that is um, given to them when they're brought back to life is based on their vitality stat. And since if you tried dividing by zero, the world would end and Z would win, it just immediately dies again. And you get credit for that death. So you all, that being said, you only have a small window to throw that life potion or life one spell on that enemy before they disappear and you lose that opportunity. So essentially, you're, long story short, you're getting multiple kills for the price of one. The end. I assume that was a good explanation. I was talking about football in chat. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Dusty getting these doubles and triples, likely going to be done with this grind sooner. Uh, and with that, could just push all the way to getting Nuke on the non slingshotted Palum, uh, which will set up the rest of the characters very nicely. So, it'll have a nice chunk of HP, and the other two will be where you want them uh, and more. question I've always had with the searcher it, does it just have a really high magic stat or just is is lightning one so weak at this point where it only does that one HP damage I'm personally a huge fan of the uh, the rod tech using the uh, starting item for both starting weapon for both Palum and Rydia the rod uh, it does a magic attack and uh, it's a very weak magic attack. It's got 100% accuracy, so. Nice. Do one damage, just like those Thor Ages. I, I think we've begun the, the sports ball uh, chat discussion <laughs> going on. This is an NFC, so UFC. Um, yeah. uh, Thing posted by Scythe Marshall to Google, all that good stuff. I'll be honest, I've lost count of the number of D machines we've been fighting here, but uh, I'm sure our runners haven't. I will say it can be a, a massive time sink if you don't pay attention and either overshot or overshoot or undershoot the amount of D. D machines you defeat. Like if you go way over, you've now wasted a whole bunch of time 
you have levels on characters here because you don't need that many levels at that point in time to beat anybody. But if you undershoot and you undershoot significantly, that is going to be brutal. Because if you wanted to set up this redeem machine manipulation, you're going to have to go to, well, the overworld again and reset everything up. Or on your ground half, you're going to have to rely on the generosity of the XP from bosses to kind of bail you out there and pick up the slack, which I may or may not be used to doing at this point. Yeah, that's one reason why that summer drop Fratella can be so big, especially for newer runners, uh, because it does give you a nice uh, even set of four weeks, especially if you're using something like Ether 2s instead of Ether 1s, because they will uh, heal Fratella all the way from zero and back up to 100. You can basically just keep track of how many Ether 2s uh, you're using. Uh, What's actually interesting is it looks like Dusty and Inbun are going to be done with their grinds at almost the same exact time. Dusty getting a cool 800,000 experience. Uh, that probably is actually going to get even the non-slingshotted Palom all the way to nuke here, uh, given the experience that has been gained already this seed. And Invent finishes up. Didn't see how much he got, though. 770,000. So that was only a 1D machine difference. Uh, considering Invent entered this grind after Dusty and Dusty was getting the triples, uh, Invent just did this grind faster. What's actually interesting is... Invent's Palum only got up to Medio, so he still needs Nuke. And I believe that, was it 52, 53? 52, he needs one more level to get there. So I think he is going with what you had said. He knows he has to do White Spear Altar. Uh, very likely that White Spear Altar by itself will get him to Nuke. And if not, the Ribbon Room will definitely do it. That is a high brain play right there. Well, well done on both of them, because just... Seeing how quickly that grind took, uh, I, I know <laughs> for me that would have taken eh, probably three, four times as long going, okay, this is my turn order, this <laughs> is it, I've screwed everything up and everything is on fire, we're fine. And uh, Inven double checking to make sure that yes, he did turn off encounters because getting to do that and then walking into an encounter when your party still has their pre-grind hit point totals uh, can be a very bad time. And we have seen that happen to people in this tournament where they just finished their grind, take a step, and have to do it all over again. Yeah. Uh, Invent made it out of the fight first. Dusty makes it to the moon first because Invent took a little bit more time menuing. Invent uh, is now headed to the moon. Both these runners, I imagine, are going to make a beeline straight for that White Spear Altar uh, to get that objective done and see if they can take a Baron Key or a Legend Sword from it and be in go mode. And as Paul plays poorly in chat has mentioned, uh, Inven might have also did a little bit of walking in addition, or instead of just straight warping. I believe he warped in the rooms where warping is faster and walked in the rooms where walking is faster, but I wasn't paying that close attention, so I could be wrong. Uh, and Ven also has to sit through this character cutscene because he did not come here before. Uh, seeing that second alum there might make him think that, oh, what if Dusty had an extra spot here? What if Dusty has two alums? And he'd be right thinking that, so. That would definitely put me on edge for sure. No, it was a palum, not an edge, Oscar. Okay, look. They have a spoon. I'm happy. Yeah, we had the slight divergence, but we are now back undiverged. We have converged. That's the word, right? something 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 dark side of the moon I'm just I'm excited to see how the rest of this plays out uh, because if this say is go mode uh, I think Dusty has a slight advantage not only from having gotten here a bit sooner but also having the two nukes uh, to invent one once he gets it but if this ends up being something where depends on what checks you make, then, uh, yeah. We're in for a, a really good finish, y'all. 
And of course, we are back to some French vanilla. The Dilunars uh, got tired of sleeping in separate beds, and so they decided to get bunk beds over in uh, in Plague's room instead. It's it's a slumber party that you never want to be a part of. This shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, Dusty has a lot of spell power here. These nukes should take out the... Or BDO. If you want to go that route, we be fine too. Dusty going with Swag Rocks. Let's see if we get some Swag Rocks over on Invisible side as well. And as Dusty finishes his dealer fight, he gets that next objective, and we get to find out what the item is. It's a tower. Oh! Right back to that tower. Uh, this is not something I expect either runner saves coming. Uh, already having to do the top of tower to even get here. I don't think that's going to be a high priority uh, for either runner, even when they do, if they do have to go back down to the blue planet to, to follow some sort of chain. So, uh, just to mix up the French vanilla, Plague here would be hilarious. Plague would be great. Or we could just have the the moon musical chairs. Or we could oh. have gold Uh, yeah, so, ha 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 himself, uh, even with power overwhelming, that's 42,000 hit points. Uh, yeah, let's... Scary. Let's... Let's adjust a few things. There we go. Yeah, size the party so that the hold gas doesn't take hold and uh, be able to freely throw up your star veil as soon as uh, possible. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how quickly Van nopes out of this fight to prep. And there it, it yep, is. There it is. Yep. And now, is he going to do the same thing? Or, yep, he is. Going straight for size. Making this party all small and cute, except for Sid. Going for Piggy on Sid. Oh, so he can uh, properly attack with Sid. Uh, because size reduces your physical attack. Piggy also stops the hold gas, but does not reduce your physical attack. Uh, I will never not be amused by teams in size and piggy mode. Me and Leggy have a little piggy plush that I bought before I met her and was not named until we moved in together. And after starting to play for Enterprise together, we have since named that uh, pig Cecil <laughs> because he is a, a piggy paladin. Have you made a cute little crystal sword and shield that you just kind of like develop into it? Uh, I am no good at arts and crafts, so no. Oh, I'm sure there will be people that would love to do that for you. Someone needs to make a crystal sword that I can Velcro to him and then an Avenger so I can take it off and then it do the Avenger instead. Yes. Also, hello, Free Enterprise. Welcome to uh, this fantastic match between Dusty Griff and Invenerable. Uh, for those of you just joining in, do not spoil. You spoil, you get the ball. So just don't. Allie, I'm not saying I don't want that. Uh, but also, it uh, looks like the Demolish on Inven's side uh, may have targeted the party member that had the ribbon. Because uh, it looks like it may have targeted it twice. Because I think we only had one dead. Board face being nice. It sounds weird. Uh, also, yes, Inven has objective four completed. Uh, I believe we. There it is. I was say we had lost our tracker in voice chat for a moment, so I was not sure if she was aware. But she's back. Also, again, additional shout outs to our wonderful behind the scenes cast and crew of Alice L1 rolling this fantastic seed and then. Uh, Imperial Dragon doing the fun, fun tracking of this. 
And I totally missed those key items, so... I um... did too. I was busy typing commands. Uh, rabbit hole potential is what's being said. Shoot. Package ah, and earth. Pack oh, that earth crystal is very spicy. That is a long check. It's a long rabbit hole. And have to wonder if this ends up being earth crystal or fey march what do you do i am so hard pressed to leave the moon uh, to do those checks I'd, I'd pretty much be doing what dusty's doing right now and checking out the ogopogo spot just you're in the area let's go see it and it's dark M, so that's not even that it's punchy but it's not that bad the spot yeah, you get three people who can cast stone. Yeah, Callum rarely misses with stone at, at these levels. So that was uh, that was over quickly. Yeah. Uh, didn't kill Tella though. Tella, Tella got levels there. Oh. Oh. There's our go mode. Um, the reason I mentioned Tella getting experience there is I don't think either runner has found a cursed ring. Uh, so if Tella gained enough agility for that to matter. Uh, that could be something very interesting. And side note, liberate, liberating Baron Castle at these levels is not going to take very long, even for more difficult of bosses there. So this is going to be a very, very spicy quick check for Dusty and Inven once Inven gets his, his news of the go mode. Yeah, uh, I still firmly think that with Dusty having two palms that have nuke, uh, that Dusty has a clear advantage going into the Zeromas fight uh, on top of the small advantage he has arriving at Baron Castle. Uh, but who knows if, say, Tella picked up a couple of agility, uh, an agility point or two from those levels that makes it hard for uh, one of his party members to get RA1. Maybe that uh, small difference opens up a window of opportunity. In a nutshell, that's pretty much exactly it. There's a, at this point, this race is so close that the smallest difference could like, be the difference of the game. Of course, it was the, the rando just gonna rando. I'll be so sad if Liberating Baron Castle gives like the twin harp. <laughs> like, oh, I wanted music. I'll be very sad. If it gives the legend sword, then that be that'll funny. be that'll be very funny. So Odin is suddenly wishing that he stayed in the basement today. Like someone uh, said in chat, I'm not the real king. I'm actually... Ah! <laughs> Blarg, I am dead. Blarg, I'm dead. Also, we have the pass. So uh, before we know it, we're going to be at this Roma's fight. Uh, no need to redive the LST. Uh, Bahamut here, you're not even going to see get a mega nuke off. I'm sorry, friend. How overwhelming in a nutshell. Like, you're queuing up a Mega Nuke, I'm sorry, but we've got Nuke, and even if it doesn't have Mega in front of it, it, uh, it wins this round. Lower level spells do have a slightly faster cast time, usually, so mm, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, except when it comes to Nuke, because Nuke is, uh, has a zero delay on its cast, so. Well, I mean, just even comparing Nuke to Mega Nuke, Nuke has a, has a five cast, clearly. But not when Wyvern does it. Wyvern does it on a zero cast, so. Well, Wyvern is a butt. That's all I got. That That is my logic and argument and... Yeah. So, speaking of Wyvern, I don't know how much you know about the later translations of FF4, because I will say that I, I don't. <laughs> Until very recently, when I found out that in later translation, Wyvern is actually called Dark Bahamut. Really? Proportionally, well, no, yeah. Wait, no, because it 
This Bahamut's darker than the what and potato. Yeah, it's the Japanese name, and it was correctly translated in later uh, English versions. Hey, Luca Key, we don't care. <laughs> Edgy Bahamut. There's our crystal. So now we are officially in go mode at 116.55, roughly. Also, not that it matters, but we finally have 10 key items. I know. I wonder if they'll do their grind now. I know, like, it's double experience. Like, that's a value that's hard to pass up. <laughs> but unfortunately, no. Uh, it does look like they're asking us in chat what time uh, the is. So I'm, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, my dog's yelling at me to go to bed as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's bedtime. Yeah. Thanks for reminding us, chat. We're just gonna we're gonna leave you yeah. rest of this evening in silence. Thanks for coming out. You were you were great. <laughs> Allie being the uh, the hero chat needs when turning this reason. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to explain the flags. Yes, By all absolutely. There is a flag in chat that is a Z with a question mark, and that is because in Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, we randomize a whole lot of stuff. We randomize boss locations, but we leave Zeromus where he's at because I believe it's Baka likes to put it this way. He is too big. He is too bad to put him anywhere else. So in order to still have some fun, because we're going to fight this guy a bunch and it would get very boring, uh, the wonderful Scala Kitty, uh, also board face before Scala Kitty uh, started making all sorts of things uh have some variations on zeromus should we say where we will face a uh, a different a different look a different uh different face uh there's a body part i'm looking for here but i can't quite place it oscar can you help me out i'm assuming am i, am I asking a question uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're asking a question here. I have a question I have to ask. In addition to how is butt, uh, I would ask whose butt are we kicking tonight? Ah, uh, yes, that was the question. Thank you. Make a note of that so I don't forget next time. Oh, I, I had like eight post-it notes on my left, or my monitor, and they all fell down. Ah. Uh, the Invenerable's right behind Dusty, so... This is gonna be this is gonna be close. Uh, as I've been saying, I believe this is Dusty's race to lose. We got Bubsy Miss! <laughs> I'm here for it. One of my girlfriends is uh, very close friends with author, author Blues and ran over upon hearing me exclaim that and clapped giddily at the screen. Well, rightfully so. Uh, Scala Kitty letting us know that she made this sprite by hand. Scala Kitty is the true final boss of Freighter Press. If she drew that by hand. I agree, that is fantastic. Oh! A little, I'm doing that, words are hard. Additional fact, like, this was Starman Random's prize for winning the Hopin last year. Starman, very, very cool. Run. Very good taste. Now, if we can, uh, if we can maybe get an agreement with, with Pretty Pink Pansy to get Bub Zetmus, I'd be really happy with that, Scala. Wanted to fight Bubsy, but evil. I, I mean, isn't, isn't that just Bubsy? <laughs> Or just the game in itself. I like that. So Bubsy, yeah. Uh, yes, the left foot Sultan, this is a race. This is, is I said at the end, this is gonna be a clinic between these two runners, and it very much was. Which screen do I watch? I don't know. Por que no los dos?
think I'd have to go cross-eyed to do that, and that just sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, especially with the uh, background going different directions and slightly different, like... A parallax <laughs> scrolling. Ah! It's like my brain is already telling me the Excedrin is downstairs in the bathroom. Finven, why did your Sid smack Rosa with a hammer? That is a, is a good question. Oh, Sid was trying to smack Tella, and the Tella went down for the Big Bang. Oh, gotcha. And there we go. We get the crack, the flash, the fizzle, and the dissolve. Dusty Griff has won this game too. The time of one hour, 22 minutes, and 23 seconds. Uh, that's a very nice, comfortable number. Uh, and yeah, we will be getting a game three between these two. It's, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll love to see it. And also my bracket loves to see it. Oh, mine does too. Uh, so we'll yeah, getting... we're, we'll see if we can get Dusty in here for an interview. Uh, but in the meantime, I just want to point out that for those interested, um, as of right now on the schedule, Dusty Inven Game 3 is set for this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that is, of course, subject to change if they decide to, but keep an eye on the Discord and on the, these channels to see when that race is coming out. And our winner of today's match has joined us, uh, Dusty Grip. GG's on that fantastic run. How did it feel? Uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, this one felt a lot nicer than yesterday. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty linear choices. A lot of uh, kind of straightforward play, but I felt pretty clean on this one. So I was pretty happy with how things went. And just for clarification, that was a microwave and not a smoke alarm, hopefully. Oh, no, that, that is a smoke alarm. Don't worry, it's fine. Oh, the oh. Are right. Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire. <laughs> Nothing's on fire. There's just a lot of smoke. Dinner's being cooked. We're fine. Uh, <laughs> Standard dinner. Yeah, it was It was just It was just the seed. It was your play. It was, it was, it was too powerful. It just set my entire apartment ablaze. It's fine. <laughs> there was a lot of nuking going on there, so I under, <laughs> understand. What if these reflected nukes actually yeah. hit yeah. that first so that's where that first whiffed nuke went. I should have known. <laughs> uh but yeah, GG's Dusty. Uh this was a great race to watch. If you watch it back, I'm sure you'll enjoy. Um there was a couple of just small differences. Y'all were step in step for a lot of it, uh that really kind of let this fall the way it did. Um when you went to go to Keyless Tower in Ven. Uh, went to go do the Mylon Z in Fey March with some wizard hats and some uh, fire damage. That kind of uh, made up the time that you had lost to the Wipe on Wyvern early. And yeah. he had grabbed a second Rosa before going the hook route. So he had a full party, whereas you were able to grab that second Palum. Yeah, that that really paid off, I think, uh, in the end. I, I was tempted to not check uh, the moon at that point for the character, but I knew if Palum or Radio was there, honestly, at that point, it would make the rest of the moon so fast. Just double nuke is so nice, and it makes the Zeramis fight so quick. Um, and I'm so comfortable with that strat, so I was like, yeah, I'll check this real quick. It's worth probably the 10 seconds, and it paid off pretty nicely. And the grind went almost perfectly for me. I was getting pretty consistent double lives, but it uh, fell off a little bit towards the middle part of it, but that created one really powerful palum that uh, made that moon not much to deal with. I've seen that second palum. <laughs> As Zoe said, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit yes on a character that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if the uh, text popped up. I think uh, I was like hacked into the game at that point. It, just it, was, like, it was like a first frame except. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you were hoping to see that second palum, or were you looking for something else that, until you found that palum? Uh, that was pretty much what I was looking for. Palum or Radio, I would have been happy with there. Pretty much any other character, I would have um, reset back to Earth and just grabbed Porum or Rosa from Tower of Wishes and just went on my way and 
uh, slingshot them because that would have been fine too. It just would have been a little not quite as fast because that double palum nuke is just so nice for clearing through stuff quickly. Zoe, are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Like our smoke alarms are just incredibly sensitive, and my girlfriends are making dinner right now, uh, so we're good. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, with that, the match is even 1-1. And interesting factoid that was brought to my attention. According to Racebot, this puts uh, this win against Invenable today puts you and Inven at a lifetime matchup uh, total of 8-8. Eight to eight. Yeah. So... <laughs> we finally, we get to break it tomorrow <laughs> with the odd matchup, finally. <laughs> and never race again. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So, I mean, what uh, does anything change for your your prep for tomorrow? I mean, or is it is it business as usual? Is it okay? Do I try something different? Like, what is the mind of Dusty Griff going into match three? I felt like today's match would have been the one where I was kind of thinking about trying something different, but things were going so well uh, in this seed that I just said, you know, heck gambling i'm just going to play the game that i normally play and i know Invin plays a pretty similar game i think our routing was likely extremely similar uh, i know he mentioned he did that mile on z as well um but other than that very similar play so yeah i, I think tomorrow i'm gonna probably do the same thing <laughs> and and may maybe i'll throw some stuff in there that i wouldn't normally do or some more spicier uh, routing decisions, but I have a pretty decent plan going into most seeds how I'm going to route it, so I likely will stick to the plan. But we might veer off a little bit. It is match three, so some hype has to be had. Yeah, going to be a hype match for sure, and uh, while we were chatting here, Inven has finished up as well. Uh, one hour, 28 minutes, and three seconds. Uh, let's see if we can get him in here. Hi, Inven. Hey, what's up? GG's. Hey, please. Now, before we say anything else, but I'm going I'm going to say something very, very important, and I'm sure that Scala will agree with me. Uh -oh. You two are not allowed to tie in your game three. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because it is Sunday, and no. We just have to immediately do one after that, then, right? I mean, I mean, I'm down for that. Yeah, make we'll it a double that. header. It'll be good. Scala, we need two newspapers, and here's stat. <laughs> <laughs> But what a difference four small steps makes on a seed. If I, I like, as soon as I got through that drop on through the pitfall, like with Tella landing that stone first try, I'm like, oh my gosh, let's just go. We're gonna get the Darkness Crystal and Fame Arch or behind the pen. We're gonna grind, we're gonna go. And four steps, two to the right to see it's the Kaipo guards and two to the left. And I do not get baited by that Mylon Z. Uh, I'm like, you know, there's a lot of rude bosses that could be up at the top of the tower, like the one from last night. But no, no, no. Uh, Kaipo guards, you have to peek that boss spot after you go through the hook route, or you're going to live a life of regret. Yeah, we were talking about that in, uh, in chat and in the comm booth. Uh, my defense was, uh, you just want to go fast. And if the freebies played out, there was no need to know who was up there. Yeah. But, you know. It happens. It happens. Uh, still proud of how I played the, the match generally, except for my Zeromas fight. But when you lose count because you see the dot done come in, it's easy to lose track and panic a little bit. But uh, we recovered it. I wasn't going to just, you know, wipe and start it over because I hadn't saved since before Baron Castle. That would not have, that would not have gone well. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so chat, chat uh, reminding us, I love the restreamer actually reminding us. Uh, so how about those freebies, uh, the Sylph Cave and uh, Sheila 1 and 2? Uh, well, I mean, no good. better than what the Fame Arch gave me. The Fame Arch just took away, you know, like four minutes of my time. The, uh, <laughs> at least. I was, actually, I was pretty <laughs> yeah. pumped to see that crystal ring, I gotta say, because that was super helpful for, and honestly, it's kind of what... <laughs> It sucked a little bit that I got that because that's what made me do Dwarf Castle. I did know it was the Kaipo Guards at top of Babel, but I was like, I have a pretty fast Palum. That's just going to sling out Quakes and get through this Dwarf Castle pretty quickly. But it would have been nicer to just get that Darkness Crystal a little earlier. But... Yeah, I walked it out of Sheila 2 as well because uh, my Tella had already gained a few levels and I hadn't seen a Cursed Ring in any of the underground shops. 
or even you know uh yeah or even eblin cave so i'm like eh, i might need this to get sid to ra1 for the zeromus fight and it turns out i did so walked <laughs> it out but yeah it, it, i i think i even i probably do the luggage spot that dr Luge spot before dwarf castle if i peek it so huge unforced error uh yeah unfortunate but these things happen to the best of us question is for Inven, what were your thoughts on picking up that second rosa and what were your additional thoughts when you saw that second palum on the moon Oh, I was fine taking the second Rosa. Uh, I, I'm i kind of in the viewpoint that once I have the one Palum, I'm okay with the other ones being either Rosas or Porums. Holdy's fine. Uh, and honestly, I kind of liked having my setup for the D-Lunar fight. Uh, throwing out multiple Cure 4s to tear through it in a hurry was pretty great. I mean, admittedly, I didn't get the slingshot anyone, but I, I don't think any of the fights gave me a problem after the grind anyway. Yeah, Dusty, uh, Dusty busted out a dual swag rock on that uh, d Lunars, which was fun to watch. <laughs> you don't mm. often get to do that, so I mean, how could I not in that instance? I think I just had to. Yeah, and I knew I'd, I was coming up one D-Money short. I knew I needed 19, and I stopped at 9 plus 9, just because it seemed like a convenient time to stop. And I'm like, eh, I'll get Nuke on the moon. And, uh, yeah, so good thing there wasn't a boss there that would have been extra punishing of that, like Ogopogo or something. But, you yeah, know, it's fine. We're actually talking about that. I believe Dusty enters D Machine maybe uh, like a minute or two ahead of you, but you finished just seconds behind him. So it was it was impressive to watch both of you do that grind at the same time. Oh wow! So I didn't lose that much time on my own. You actually, yeah, you actually made up quite a bit of time there because Dusty only did one more D Machine's worth of experience than you, despite having that lead. It was actually really impressive how quickly you got through that. Nice. Well, I'm feeling good about Sunday's match then. Uh, again, can't be disappointed in my play. Just, you know, you chase a bad boss that gives you bubkis and it bites you. So, feeling really good. I hope we put on a good show for y'all and I'm looking forward to uh, closing out this little uh, this little series one way or the other Sunday night. It's gonna be good. Yeah. And uh, Inven, you are a, a dear friend of mine. But Sunday is my birthday and Dusty, I want a good birthday present. And I have you advancing in my bracket, so. Um, then I will, I will count that and say I, I appreciate it. it's Zoe's birthday, but I, I gave her a C that I have rolled personally, and I have my bracket to pay out. So, Inven, if you'd uh, take that win. I, I I I take what the seed gives me. There's a lot on the line here. I, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to forget about D-Mist again or remember D-Mist again. I don't know what I'm supposed to well, it was it was fantastic to watch y'all race for a second time, and it's going to be fantastic uh, to see that third race as well. Uh, we are trying to figure out who are we are going to send this party on over to, uh, but in the meantime, I do want to just mention what we have on deck for tomorrow. Uh, we have Baka Shinobi and Penguinator Game 3 at 4 p.m. on the Free Enterprise channel, and we have PK477 and Flurry14, that is Flurry, F-L-E-U-R-Y, PK, I don't care what you say. And that's at 10 p.m., also on the Free Enterprise channel. Uh, those are going to be another two fantastic Game 3s to watch. And honestly, it was an honor to be in, well, essentially a seed of giants with just, I mean, Zoe, Inven, Dusty, Ali, MV, all of you are fantastic runners of this game and it's it's been a treat slash fangirling <laughs>